All right, good morning. What we're gonna be doing today is some abstract art. I'm gonna show you a PowerPoint presentation, which is just some slides that have information. And then we're gonna go over and the video will start on our drawing project. So let me share my screen. Let me pull up what I need to show you. And do this. Okay, and let me move my picture of me out of the way. So we're going to be doing some line drawings today. Line drawings are going to be a review of things we've learned in the fall, having to do with shape, lines, colors, repetition, patterns, kind of review of everything, okay? And we're going to do it based upon the art of Joseph Amadokpo, hard name to say. He is an African artist who is still alive and um, makes, color, makes art that have abstract shapes and designs and it's full of bright colors. So this is one of his pictures. In here, he's got hidden shapes, rectangles, triangles, circles, squares. And he started out with these shapes and then he built all of the other stuff around it. Um, so we're gonna make something similar to this today. Let me show you a few more of his. Here's another one. I really like this one. This one's got hidden faces in it. So if you look here, here's an eye and an eye and a nose and a mouth. Um, you look a different way, an eye, an eye, a nose and a mouth, a face over here. There's faces hidden here. The more you look at this one, the more you can see hidden things. Um, I really like the colors he used in this one. It's just kind of kind of cool looking. The next one. Um, is one that's more traditional looking. It's a picture picture. Um, it reminds me of Vincent van Gogh's um, paintings of the fields out in France that we've looked at in other years with the, the huts down here and the repeating lines that he did down here. But then up here, he's got a tree that's very abstract and it looks like the lines in the other um, artwork. Hey, come on, change pictures. Here's another one um, and you can see these are more squares and rectangles and triangles. These are more squares and rectangles. Um, there's a few triangles and other shapes and in this one he colored larger blocks even if there were lines in them he colored larger chunks um, a solid color. So like there's five or there's a bunch of different shapes that are all colored the same shade of yellow here. And so these are the things we're going to be doing. Um, today. So uh, I'm going to stop the video and I'm going to put up our drawing. All right. So this is an example of um, what we're going to be making today. This is great big and it's got a lot of colors to it, but it is like the abstract art in the slideshow I just showed you by our focused artist, um, Joseph. I can't say his last name very well. I said it in the earlier in the video. Um, so we use, we're using markers. We're gonna start with a black marker. We're gonna draw some shapes and you're gonna follow my directions um, to a degree. You're gonna have some freedom in making choices and then you're gonna color things in um, when we're done using color to show repetition and pattern because the whole point is to use our imagination to be creative and um, make an abstract work of art. So to get started, you're gonna get a um, blank piece of paper, black marker. And the way we start is we're gonna draw two shapes that are shapes that we know, like a circle, a rectangle, a square, a triangle. And you can choose and you can put them anywhere on your paper. So they can be any size. So I'm gonna do a triangle and then maybe a circle up here. You don't have to do what I do. Pick, it, pick two shapes and then put them on the paper. Next, we're gonna add some lines around the sides of our paper. They can be wavy, they can be zigzag, they can be castle lines, they can be curved. You choose what kind of lines you wanna put here. 
Um, so we could do a curved line. We can do a bent line that's got a corner in it. We could do some zigzags if we wanted to. We could do a castle block. Remember, a castle block looks like the top of a castle. All right. After we've done this, and remember you can pause the video if you need to, to catch up. I'm going to go quickly. So stop the video if you need to so that you can do this. And then push play again and you can catch up. So the next thing we're going to do is add three more lines to each of these. Okay? So you can go above them or below them. And they're going to mirror or echo what we just drew. So there's one. If you get close to the paper and tight, you can make an adjustment and move it over a little bit. And then let me do, I still have room. I can do one more down here. And this doesn't have to be perfect. So now let's do three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Ah, I put an arrow instead of a <laughs> bottom on this one. It's okay. Is sometimes we make a mistake and we make it work. All right, so four, 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 and four. So the next thing we're gonna do is make some echo lines around our, our shapes. So whatever shape you drew, we're gonna add, if, it's, if you've got one big enough, we're gonna add an echo of that line on the inside, make them touch, an echo of that line on the outside, and then I'm gonna come over here and do the same thing, an echo on the inside, and an echo on the outside. If you wanna add one more echo in each of these, you could. And if you touch a previous line, don't go through it, just stop, pick up your marker, and move it over. All right, so now the next thing we're gonna do is add some lines to start connecting things, okay? So to do that, we're just gonna start by drawing a line and a line to draw it to divide our paper. You can see how this one touches right here. I'm gonna just do some random lines. If I hit a shape, I'm gonna pick my marker up and jump to the other side. The only time we wanna crisscross is like in this space. Um, And let's see, how about, and it's okay to touch to close things up because we kind of want stuff to touch so that we have something that's like an enclosed box. And you're just gonna have to use your imagination to see how things connect. Okay. Let's do that. And so I'm just using my imagination to see how things might touch each other and take my paper in to um, making things kind of closed up. I'm going to close up the ends. Let's see, make this look like a rainbow on one end. And then maybe go ahead and touch it up here. So now, this is closed in like a box, okay? The next thing I'm gonna do is hide something. Oop, I got some open lines here. Hide something in my picture. You can hide your name. You can hide um, a face. You could hide something else. Um, in a different picture I did, I used the same technique to draw a dragonfly. And so I drew 
the dragonfly or a butterfly, and then I made it divided up into sections and colored them in. And that's what we're gonna do to some of these faces. Now, we don't wanna go so crazy that this is so busy you'll never finish, okay? Um, if things are too, the lines are too small or too much, um, you're not gonna have space to add colors and it's gonna take you a very long time to finish. We want things to be big um, so that we can color inside and we want things to kind of be chunky. So to hide something, I'm gonna hide a name. I'm gonna hide my first name, which is Terry. And I think I'm gonna hide Terry up here. So here's my name. Whoops, here goes my paper. So that's kind of hidden. I'm gonna color around it and over it later, okay? Um, and then I'm gonna just start adding some more shapes. I'm gonna maybe add um, some more circles, but with space. And when I touch lines, I'm gonna kind of stop. I'm gonna put some more round lines right there to finish it up. Um, I can put fat lines by turning my marker sideways and making some um, additional like stripes, like so. And so you see I'm drawing big shapes, so I have spaces to put color. <gasps> Maybe I'm gonna do the same thing and touching these lines, but on a different angle. And then if that's as far as I wanna go and I wanna do something else, let's go a different direction. Um, one place I put some swirls, like loop-de-loop -loop swirls. And so if you wanna do that somewhere, let's see, how about right here, you could. And remember, we're gonna kinda fudge a little bit when we hit the edge. And maybe just a couple more. Maybe I'm gonna put like a big um, X and over here, maybe I'm gonna put some more triangles. And you know, that looks pretty good. This looks like enough where I can start coming through and adding colors. So when you start, when you get to the point that you can add color, you are gonna use markers, pick whatever colors you want, and then just start coloring things. Um, to keep from having to cap, take off, cap, take off, cap, take off, what we're gonna do is color a number of things the same color at one time. So that's gonna be orange. Um, maybe over here might be some orange. And so I'm just gonna pick some places where I wanna put colors. And I'm gonna try to be as neat as I can so that my colors stay in the space I drew. I could pick some more places, but you understand what I'm doing. And then I'm gonna think about colors that might look good with orange. Since orange is a warm color, red and yellow, which are also warm colors, they make you feel hot, can be used to go next to it. So maybe I can put some yellow. And so you wanna think about what kind of colors to put where. You can put your favorite colors. Um, maybe I can put another piece of yellow over here. And if you turn your marker sideways, you can color faster. If you do it like this, it's gonna take forever. But if you turn it sideways, your color can go in a little quicker. And then I would put more yellow in other places. And then think about doing some red. Kind of looking like a crazy eye here. 
And if you get a little bit out of your lines, it's okay. Um, I'm trying to be as neat as I can, but sometimes it's difficult, right? So I'm gonna take my time and color things in. All right, and then I need another color. So I think I'm gonna pick a pink, just because a pink is kind of part of red. You add white to red and you get pink. Now, on these other colors, I put the orange, yellow, and red right here, but if I put pink right here, it's gonna be pink touching pink. So I think I'm gonna put a different color right here so that it's not the same color touching each other. Um, I think I'm gonna end up, I've got a gray. It's not my favorite kind of shade, but I think it'll work next to the pink. And because I want to repeat so I have some patterns going on, I may take my gray and then come over here and color something else in gray, maybe my castle blocks. And so this is what I'm gonna keep doing, taking my time to color things in neatly. You don't have to color every single shape. Um, some things you can leave white if you want to but it's nicer if you color most of it. And I would keep adding colors until it's finished. And so when you get done, you should, not this big, but have something that resembles this. I could still go in and add some more color in places if I wanted to, um, or I can leave them white because I kind of like the white popping through in the middle. So this is our lesson for abstract art abstract art are things that really give you the feeling of I like it or I don't like it. It makes me happy, um, but it doesn't really look like anything. By the way, I did have something else hidden in here. There's kind of a face, eyeball, eyeball, nose, and mouth that kind of accidentally got hidden in here. I think it's funny. Um, so you'll be in, it'll be interesting to see what you've got when you get done. Remember to send me pictures of your work when you're finished. Bye.